Welcome back to the Sportsmax Zone. It's time to talk about the biggest party in sport. The new Caribbean Premier League CPL season is 22 days away and ahead of the start of the highly anticipated season, the major news to report is three of the six franchises will now be operating under Indian ownership. Royal Stakes Group, RSG owners of IPL franchise Rajasthan Royals, has attained a majority stake in the Barbados Tridents. What does this mean, you may ask? Well, the new deal will see the Tridents renamed to the Barbados Royals. Now, where St. Lucia is concerned, the Punjab Kings owners are set to rebrand the franchise with a new name and a new logo. So when the CPL bowls off on August 26, the Stars will play under the name St. Lucia Kings. Both Barbados and St. Lucia will now join Trinidad as the trio with Indian-based owners. Joining us now to discuss these latest CPL developments is our regional cricket analyst, Fazir Mohammed. Faz, welcome. Good to be on the show once again, Mariah. Always a pleasure to have you on the Sportsmax Zone. So I'm starting with the business aspect of this. You know, what does this mean? The Indians, you know, looking in the direction of the Caribbean Premier League. It's very good as far as marketing is concerned. I suppose the only thing left now is to say Jai Ho when the first ball is being bowled in oh. the CPL of 2021. Because let's face it, Mariah, India are the market that dominates the game. They, they control much of the game. They can determine who's going to succeed, who's going to fail as far as various tournaments. So for example, uh, this, this fledgling competition, the Kashmir uh, competition that is supposed to be starting. They are totally against it because of their ideological differences between uh, themselves and, and Pakistan, of course. So uh, if they say that it is going to succeed, it's going to succeed. If they say it's going to fail, it will fail. And the fact that you've got the Caribbean Premier League, which, as you said correctly, promotes itself as the biggest party in sport, and you've got two more Indian-owned interests being uh, involved directly in funding and supporting two of the CPL, which means that now 50% of the CPL teams have Indian interest because, of course, KKR has interest in TKR and mm -hmm. TKR dominant force in the CPL for the last couple of seasons. They've won more titles than anyone else. So from a business point of view, from an audience point of view, from a numbers point of view, which whether it's number in terms of eyeballs on the CPL, in terms of, of the, the numbers of, 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 of opportunities as far as revenue earning, uh, everything points towards at least what is happening right now as a good business decision. Definitely. And, you know, I'm glad you mentioned TKR because it brings me to my next question about, you know, how the um, introduction of these Indian owners have, you know, really helped the TKR team. And I'm talking from a um, strategic point of view because I've been in conversations with the players and they spoke about, you know, how professional um, everything is. They don't really have to worry about basic amenities, all these different things, because we know in the CPL there were certain teams that were struggling to even, you know, get things on the ground, get even get an owner on all these different things. So um, the Indian model has worked for TKR. Do you see it working for the other teams? It's going to have to be tweaked in a certain way because not everything automatically translates very easily. I think what we need to understand, and you pointed it out correctly, a lot of these franchises were in serious financial trouble. A couple of years ago, many people felt that the Barbados Tridents would have to move out of Barbados. We saw what happened to the Antigua Hawks Mills. After just one season, they had to move out of Antigua and became the St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots simply because, again, the numbers weren't adding up. And this is what we need to understand when it comes to franchise cricket. Uh, a lot of people might raise the legitimate issue about losing your identity. Well, that really depends upon the CPL people. Uh, those in charge of the tournament itself, they've had a change of CEO, Pete Russell, the chief operations officer for a long time from the start of the tournament in 2013. He's now the CEO taking over from Damien O'Donoghue. And it remains to be seen whether it will actually change the identity of the tournament itself because there's a particular party type environment, Caribbean style flavor that is associated with the competition, even if the, the names and the brand names are distinctly Indian. So it's about finding that balance. And I know a lot of people will raise concerns about it, about CPL losing its identity. But no one has talked about, for example, Manchester City Football Club, their stadium being called the Etihad, uh, which, which is an Abu Dhabi airline. 
Nobody talks about Leicester City, the champions of 2016. Their stadium be called, being called the King Power Stadium, which is a product from Thailand. Because at the end of the day, once you can win over the fans by playing good cricket, as I mentioned with the English Premier League, good football, and win things, these things don't really matter at the end of it all. The, the particular labels, although the identity is so very important. Faz, yes. Chris here. Um, I mean, we spoke about the, the, the market inside, as you have mentioned, and the influx of money, which is very important from a financial perspective and so on for the Caribbean. Let's talk a little bit about the cricket. Should there be something that the Caribbean, the CPL, or Cricket West Indies or so, look to gain from a move like this? What, from a cricketing perspective, can we take away from the Indian ownership coming in and, 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 and pumping their, their money into the game? What should we be looking to achieve? Well, I don't know how much leverage uh, the, 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 the interest in the CPL would have because the Indians could probably say, well, you know, if we didn't intervene, half of your franchises would be out of business. You, so, so when you look at it that way, uh, it, it, it does present a situation where the Indian interest could have much more leverage than where it felt it would do the least damage. And West Indies cricket is seen as, as generally irrelevant as far as being a big player on the world stage. So in, in, a, in a sense, it's probably right that the, the Indian authorities, the Indian franchises would see themselves as wanting to invest in the CPL because a lot of the star names in the IPL are West Indian players. And uh, yeah, I yeah, I was just about to say that part. Right, I was just about to say, because as I said, the, the, obviously from the financial perspective, it's huge. I mean, the Caribbean needs money. The Caribbean doesn't have the kind of private sponsorship to really facilitate a lot of these big money moves and so on. So the fact of the Indian influx is, is excellent. However, I, I also love to look at it from, a, as you said, a, a cricketing perspective as well. Now, as you said, with this marriage going in, happening now with, a, with three out of the six franchises and the IPL being the strongest league when it comes to T20 cricket, is this almost a sign that there might be a lot, a bigger influx of Caribbean players in the IPL? Do you think that this will open avenues and more opportunity because now they will be familiar with a lot of the local base players. I'm sure they would have been anyway, because I remember the first season of the CPL in 2013. And we, we were, unfortunately, I was part of the commentary team for <laughs> right. the season. And you, you, you actually had Indian businessmen around, and they were asking questions about this player or that player and so on. And, and, and as, as you know, uh, everything is, is on television. Everything is on the internet. Everything right. is on YouTube. So nothing is really secret anymore. Uh, everyone is, uh, is aware of, of these players' potential and so on. What I would like to see, though, and I, and I think this really speaks to the, the bedrock of Western East cricket. It's all well and good to talk about the money and the opportunities for the players in the T20 game. Can there be any sort of leveraging that would bring some revenue to the grassroots of the Caribbean game, because that is really our problem. Our challenge is not so much the issue of producing the talents who will star for the CPL, the IPL, the BBL, or any other L that you could come up and with. And that's why I said first that I am, that's why I'm wondering, as you said, what does the Caribbean, that's why when I was talking about the beneficial, the beneficial matters and so on for the Caribbean, that is what I was getting at. I mean, yeah. how will the Caribbean benefit fully from a cricketing perspective? Well, I want to jump in here because I feel like they would benefit because I feel as if we would see more Indian players coming into the Caribbean Premier League now. We had Pravin Tambe for the TKR team. And with that expertise from the Indian players, they can benefit, remember, all our Caribbean franchises, they have a lot of young um, young Caribbean players taking part. And just being around these players um, from the Indian team can benefit them because they are a powerhouse in cricket and we know how well Indian, India has done. We spoke about the, um, the grassroots programs that they have so much more that their B team and C team can beat our A team. So I feel like we can, the intermarrying of, you know, the cricketing culture, maybe what they use as their talent can, you know, seep into our, into our um, structure and we can benefit, it'll be an interchange. So you, you think that a window would be open that the Indian players, because remember that the Indian players don't travel to a lot of the other T20 leagues. In fact, none of them travel to the but other. But they can start thinking. And I was wondering if no, with, with a lot of the Indian owners in the Caribbean, do you think that that will allow for some of these top Indian players to come to the Caribbean? Because that would be a big deal in just in terms of, you know, them being in, in, in the Caribbean environment and players learning from them, seeing these skills and so on. That could be a, a way of enhancing the, the, the quality that we have here in the Caribbean. First. I think so. It, it could be, but I, I know the BCCI are very jealous about their product. I, I, I talked about Correct. the Kashmir League, which they intend to destroy uh, and destroy anyone 
who tries to be associated with it. They did the same thing with the Indian Champions League. Not many people recall that that was a league that was supposed to start with the likes of Shane Warne, Inzama Balhat, Brian Lara had signed yes. up for it. That was supposed to be, in fact, the first season was a few months before the IPL. And the BCCI made sure that anyone involved with that was immediately alienated unless you went on bended knee to beg for forgiveness, which many people did. But I, I am more, uh, Mariah, with the greatest respect to your point, I am more inclined with Chris's point because I think it's all well and good to say, well, you've got Rohit Sharma, you've got Virat Kohli, and I'm <laughs> fantastic. If it happens, I don't think it will because the Indians are very, very protective of their product. I think it's more important that they be persuaded or there be some sort of arrangement that will bring either financial resources to the grassroots of the correct, Caribbean, correct. a bit of sponsorship to the four-day game, because jump high, jump low, even if nobody ever watches it, that is the bedrock of our Caribbean game. That is the, the nursery for all of these players to either become T20 superstars or become proper test cricketers or one day cricketers. And if something could be worked out, whether it's financial, whether it's in terms of personnel, bringing their expertise towards the franchises in our first class game, in our domestic game, I think that's where we'll really benefit right. beyond the amount of dollars that might come in. Definitely. So this discussion energy. will definitely continue as we're looking forward um, for this version of the CPL now that we have some more rich owners and we look forward to connecting with you again. I suspect everyone will have to brush up on their Hindi. Well, trust me, I'm very good. Do you know how many Bollywood films I've watched? I will be fine. You all need to get to work. Oh, is it Hindi? <laughs> yeah. All right, we go to break fast. Thank you again so much, Fazir Mohammed, our regional cricket analyst. We go to break. We'll be back. <laughs>